The focus of my art actually changes uh, according to my mood. <laughs> Sometimes I do art for art's sake, uh, and it's a way of, it's kind of therapeutic when I do abstraction. It allows me to go gestural, to, to basically go improv, go into a, a lot of different spaces. But, you know, I, I always seem to come back to something that's figurative, that's something that's kind of narrative. This is an enslaved man in uh, Philadelphia. His name was Moses Williams. And um, his parents were actually set free earlier on, but for some strange reason, there was a law in Philadelphia that said he couldn't be set free until he was 27. So his master at the time was um, a guy named William Phelps, I think it was. And he taught him how to do these uh, silhouette drawings. And he became known for doing, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of 8,000 of them. Arguably, he was the first African-American to receive any recognition as an artist in the United States. This is an example of the Black Madonnas. I did a series of 18 of these. They're based on traditional portraits of Madonna and Child by Bellini, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael. And what I've done is kind of change the context of them. What you'll notice from top to bottom are actually these tantos, these uh, kind of graphic forms that are characterizations of my mantra. I've been involved in meditative practice for the last 40 years. And uh, I had always been looking for some way to communicate the idea of a mantra graphically. So I, I pretty much settled on this. And you'll notice it's a through line through both the Black Madonna series and the Halo series. This is a guy named Henry Box Brown. He was a slave actually in Virginia. And what he did was actually put himself in a crate and mailed himself to Philadelphia. It took him something like six days to get from Virginia to Philadelphia. and He almost died in the course of it. After he got out, he became a magician. Wasn't really well received in the United States, but went to Europe and was able to tell his story and do magic there and became quite successful. This is Marie Joseph de Angelique. She was an enslaved person in Montreal, Canada. She was mistreated constantly by her master. And she kept threatening her master, said, I'm going to burn your house down, I'm going to burn your house down. In 1764, there was a fire in Montreal. Most of all of old Montreal got burned down. So they blamed it on her. They made her hold a torch in front of the parish church. And then uh, once the torch went out, they, uh, they hung her. And it was about three weeks later, they found out that she really wasn't responsible. This is a woman named Margaret Garner. She was the person that Toni Morrison based the story Beloved on. She had three children and she actually had escaped slavery, but because of the fugitive slave law, she was basically cornered. And as opposed to giving her children up, she actually killed her daughter. It's just, it's one of the saddest stories I've come across. She was tried, but um, she was actually set free because she was considered property. So she had to actually live with the fact that she had killed her daughter. She ultimately died of, I think, tuberculosis. There are stories to be told, and I want to be in a position to tell those stories and find effective ways to do that. And if those stories in some way impact people's lives, that's, I've done my job. I've accomplished something.